praise yeah. God. Amen. If you would turn in your Bibles to St. Luke. Shakia, it's good to see you. Amen. Here. Amen. 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 St. Yeah. Luke chapter 8. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is really great to be in fellowship this afternoon. Thank you all. I know we wasn't able to say, but thank you for coming to worship with us in our launch service. Amen. Amen. And we're thankful to be able to be here and, and share God with you and worship to God together. Amen. That is what it's about, worshiping God together. St. Luke, chapter 8. And we're going to start at verse 43. St. Luke chapter 8, verse 43. Amen. When you have it, please signify by saying amen. 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 And it reads from the King James Version, amen. I want to read it from the New Living Translation as well, amen. Give y'all a couple more time. Turn, praise God. <coughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Luke 8 and 43 says, And a woman having an issue. That's enough right there. Right, amen. Uh -huh. Having an issue of blood 12 years, mm -hmm. which had spent all her living upon physicians, mm -hmm. neither could be healed of any. Verse 44, and it says, came behind him mm -hmm. and touched the border of his garment. Mm -hmm. And immediately her issue of blood Stanched. The New Living Translation reads, and it says at verse 43, and it reads, it says, a woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding, and she could find no cure. Verse 44 says, coming up behind Jesus, she touched the fringe of his robe and immediately the blood bleeding stopped. If I could use for a sermon topic this afternoon, it would be get low to get up. Get low to get up. Get up. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we honor you to, today. Yes, Lord. We glorify you. We magnify your name this afternoon because your name is worthy to be praised. You and your name is high to be lifted up. Yes, and God, for this little while, while we tarry in fellowship and we eat of your word, we ask now, Father, that you would break the bread of heaven. Yes, and God, yes. that you allow our bellies and our spirit to be receptive of what you would have to us to partake of today. Yes, Father, we don't stand in judgment, but we stand willing to give you glory and honor yes, for your word. It's your word that will transform the very essence of who we are. Yes, God, it's a word that will transform our mind. It's the word of God that will compel yes. us and propel us into to a new dimension of who you are in our lives. It would allow us to embark on a new level of intellect, God, by knowledge and wisdom from your word. So, Father, we ask now that your spirit will endow us with your word yes, today God. that will help us to be better productive citizens for the kingdom of God. Yes. Father, wherever your word has to search us out, let it do so today, Lord God. Some of us stand in one thing and some of us stand in the need of another, but whatever we stand in, God, you are able to meet all of our needs according yes. to your riches and glory. Yes. Father, Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you, God, that you would get the glory out of our lives. God, we shift our perspective today, Lord God, and we think on who you are in our lives and what you did in this word, that we know that if you did it then, you can do it now. And God, have your way in our hearts, God. Have your way in this place, Lord God. We give you permission to move. We give you permission to speak. We give you permission to deliver. We give you permission to heal. We give you permission to restore. We give you permission to revive. We give you permission to set us free. We give you permission to be changed today in 
our lives. Yes, God. Have your way in this place. Do your will and your way in this room. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Get low to get up. Get low to get up. Amen. Yesterday, as I was pondering, part, part, pondering on this word, all I had was get low. <laughs> get low. And you know, that's something. Like, get low, get low, get low. You know, and, and I, I thought about get low, and then today I heard get low to get up. Amen. Because sometimes we get too low that we don't get up. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes we get so low that we don't want to get up. Yes. Amen. Amen. But I want to encourage us today to get low for a reason, but to get up for a purpose. Amen. Amen. Get low Amen. to get up. Amen. Amen. As we look at this text today, we find that God is speaking to us through uh, uh, um, a situation that occurred, amen, amongst the crowd. We are looking at the word of God today and God is teaching us, will, will teach us and show us through his word uh, that we all have some issues and we all got some problems. Yeah. Some of our issues may be a little different than others, but whatever we are facing, we all have dealt with some issues one time and another. Uh, and, and, and we can't stand in judgment and say your issue is, is lower than mine because whatever issue you may be dealing with may have a great weight to you. Yeah. It may look small to me, but it has a great weight to you. And so whatever issue or whatever we may be facing or will face, it has and it carries weight. Uh, as believers, we will be faced with many obstacles and challenges that will pose us uh, it will either challenge us to move forward and to get up or it will challenge us in a place where we don't want to get out from where we are. Uh -huh. And so as believers in this time and in this age, God has called every last one of us to do a work for the kingdom. Uh -huh. And in order for us to do the work in the kingdom or for the kingdom, we cannot stay in a low place. Yeah. We cannot stay stuck in a place that will have us from getting up from where we are going to achieve the goal that God has set for us. And so when we look at this text, we find that there is a woman who's got some issues. We have a woman who uh, has a problem on her hand that she can't seem to solve by herself. We have a woman who has a problem on her hand that has looked for other help out of other resources and can cannot find anybody to help her. We in this walk have been in that place just like this woman where we have needed some help with an issue that we have tried to solve on our own but for some reason we were never able to solve the problem. We have had some issues that when we look to our friends and we have gone to people who have been qualified, we have gone to people who have had the education to help us, we have gone to people who have been certified to do it and the very people that we have gone to about our issue that they have been certified in still could not help us. Anybody here has ever had a problem that you thought that your friend could solve? You had a problem that you thought that your neighbor could solve? You had a problem that you thought that your wife could solve? You had a problem that you thought that your sister could solve? Let me bring it home. You had a problem that you thought that your pastor was equipped to handle but for some reason you were not able to get the answer that you were looking for, whether it's from the one that was certified or whether it was from the pastor that preaches every Sunday and lays hands on the people that cause demons to come out. You look for a resolvement in your issue, but the very person that you have looked to could not even help you. Jesus. There is a purpose to them not helping you. There's a purpose to it. We've done that. We called up people on the phone. We've Facebooked them. We have instant messaged them about a, a problem that they don't even have a solution for. Uh -huh. And if they had a solution for it, it ain't solving my problem. Yeah. Uh, and we be truthful about it. Sometimes people are looking to hear your issue so they can voice theirs and see how you can help them instead of you helping them. Come on in here, somebody. Sometimes it ain't always about uh, them. you looking for them to have an answer. You look for them for an answer, but they're looking for you to solve their problems. And yeah, I didn't come for you to solve my problem. I came you to help me. How is it that you're going to help me? But now you're looking for... We, we two things and two peas in a pod. We're both looking for help, and we ain't no good for each other. No good for each other. So there's a woman here. Take your time, sir. Who has an issue. And the Bible declares and tells us about her issue. She bleeds consistently. She bleeds constantly. Uh, and she has a problem here. She has a major problem. She's yeah. going to fix 
Uh, she's in a, in, in a ruckus. Yes. She is in a, ma a bad situation here. Uh, and, and, and if she can't find help soon, she's going to die bleeding. Uh -huh. Amen. She's going to die bleeding. And so when we look at this text, the Bible declares that this woman of God has suffered. She has suffered for 12 long years. Now, when we look up that word suffer, that word suffer is defined as experience or to be subject to something bad or unpleasant. Uh -huh. An experience. This woman is experiencing something that is that she's subject to. It, it, it is not that her issue is subject to her, but it has become that she is now subject to her issue. Uh -huh. And when we say subject to her issue, that means that everybody knows her not by her name, but by her issue. Uh -huh. There are people who know you by your issue and not by your name. There are people who will call you by your issue and not call you by your name, which means they are giving weight to your issue, which means that you as a person don't really matter, but it's your issue that takes prevalent. There's issue that has precedent, and people will know you by your issue. That's why the woman is not named in the Bible. She is not named in the Bible. She is known by the woman with the issue of blood. Simply for a precedent time that you can put your name in that place and say, I I got an issue. I got some problems. I got some circumstances. So that way you won't be in judgment about who you are or what issue you got, but you can relate to this person in the Bible now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so people would know you by your issue. Jesus. Instead of knowing you by your name. And so when we see here, she has suffered, which means she's experienced or be subject to something bad or unpleasant. This was not pleasant to her. I don't know anybody in their right mind, pastor, who wants to suffer. I don't know anybody in their right mind who wants to go through and bleed consistently. I don't know anybody who wants to go in their right mind and who wants to be attacked consistently. But the Bible declares that she was experiencing something that was very unpleasant to her. It was making her feel uncomfortable. And matter of fact, not just her, it was making people around her feel uncomfortable. Sometimes people don't want to help you because they're dealing with the same thing that you're dealing with. And they don't know how to handle it. And because they don't know how to handle it, you being in their presence has made them uncomfortable. Let's talk about the Holy Ghost. Those who are fire baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues. When you walk into a room, you clear the room because the demons are uncomfortable with you being there. They're uncomfortable. They have made their issues known and those who are walking in authority and the power of God walk in the room and they have now become uncomfortable. Glory to God. Jesus. Say that. Say that. Yes, sir. So not only is this woman experiencing something subject to or uh, that's bad or pleasant, but there's another definition that I found very befitting for this topic, uh -huh. get low to get up, is that it is defined, suffer is not only defined as experience to be subject to something bad or unpleasant, but it is defined as to tolerate. Mm. To tolerate. So this woman has an issue that is unpleasant to her, but she is tolerating the issue. There are some things in our life that we are just tolerating. Amen. There are some people in Amen. our life that Amen. we are just tolerating. And, uh, and when we get to the place where we are sick and tired of being sick and tired, when we get to the place and stop being identified by the issue, there comes a point in our life where we gotta seek beyond ourselves and get some help that will cause us to stop tolerating and cause what we've been tolerating to come out. Yes, sir. Teach, Pastor. This woman has been tolerating her issue, which means she's been putting up with her issues. The church has been putting up with issues. Men and women of God have been putting up with issues for so long that if we are not careful, we would now start becoming the issues that we have tolerated. Jesus. Jesus. Which means we have now become a part of the party of toleration. And we don't want to get rid of it because we have now tapped into that arena. Sometimes the issues we are dealing with is there to build tolerance. 
This woman for 12 years had been suffering consistently and she's been tolerating this issue. And as I was on my way here, God said, there are some things that you're just going to have to tolerate to build character. Amen. Tolerate to build momentum. Tolerate to build your faith. Tolerate to build that where I am right now, I'm tolerating it for a purpose. I'm dealing with this for a purpose. And I don't want it to go some nowhere right quick, but I want to be able to understand what I'm tolerating. That way it can give me more momentum when greater things come my way. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So there are some issues that we are dealing with just to build tolerance. Tolerance. You haven't experienced anything until you can tolerate some stuff. Oh, wow. We've experienced, I've experienced that, but did you tolerate it? Did you understand what it was first? And as I was writing that down, he said, you haven't experienced anything until you tolerate some stuff. And he led me to the word endure. Endurance. Which means you ain't going through nothing until you endure something. Yeah, yeah. I, I, we are living in a time where Christians don't want to endure anything. We we just want to face it and move on. But there is some stuff that you're just going to have to endure to build momentum, which means to build character or to build strength. We can't cause demons to come out if we ain't never dealt with the demon. We cannot cause healing to happen if we ain't never been healed. We can't help somebody get set free if we ain't never set free. So she suffered. Uh -huh. And then God said, go to 1 Peter and 4. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then he says, after you endured, you, which means you have suffered or tolerated a little while. He says, 1 Peter and 4 says, after you have suffered a little while, uh -huh. the God of grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. The only reason why you are able to tolerate it is because God is trying to establish you. The only reason why you're going through what you're going through is because God wants to establish you. And God wants to give you some strength and God wants to confirm who you are in him so that when you get to the next level, you will be able to take more. Yes, sir. But we don't want to endure. We don't want to go through nothing. We don't want to suffer. I believe the Bible says to suffer with Christ is to gain. Amen. And I believe that in order for us to reign with him, we have to suffer with him. Which means that we are not exempt from going through trials and tribulations. We are not exempt from being persecuted, lied on, talked about, mistreated, puked, and scorned. We are not exempt for that. But until the body of Christ can develop some tolerance, until the body of Christ can develop some maturity, we are going to endure some stuff while we're crossing this path called earth. And we will not get to see Jesus if we don't want to go through nothing. I've never seen a body of Christ that want to serve a God, but don't want to experience a God. I've never seen a body of Christ that want to worship God, but don't want to take no hits. I ain't never seen a body of Christ that don't mind praising God, but don't want to go through nothing. In order for you to see him, you're going to have to suffer with him. But he said that after you have suffered, just a little while, just a little while. Now your little while may be different from my little while. Your little while may be two years, mine might be five years, but whatever little while it is, God's going to give us the strength to get through it. I may be out right now. I may not seem like I'm in right now. But just know, baby, I ain't out for the count. I'm just going through. Just know that I'm not counting. I'm not done. I'm not over. It's not been canceled. I'm just suffering a little bit so I can get to see Jesus. I'm just suffering a little bit so I can get to the next level. I'm just suffering a little bit so I can find out who I am in God. I'm just suffering a little bit so I can understand that God is my provider. Yes, sir. Don't you worry about the church not being filled. Just go through a little bit. Just endure just a little while. Because in due season, the Bible says in due season, if you faint not, you will. You will, which is a promise from God. He says that he will confirm, strengthen, and establish. 
which means make your name known. Ah, thank you, God. Which means he will put you on a high place. Yeah. He will put you in a place of authority. He will put you in a place of overseeing, but you cannot oversee if you have not been overseen. All right. All right. Submission. Yes, sir. You're teaching. We want to skip the ladder and go straight to the top. Praise God. Help me in here, Holy Ghost. We just want to get in and do the work, but there's some stuff that you will not appreciate until you go through. There's just some stuff that you will not be happy about until you face a little suffering. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Oh. But he said, a little while. Just a little while. So, let's bring the little while to the woman with the issue. Now, for you and I who are sitting here today, 12 years to me is not no little while. Not at all. Not at all. Amen. Amen. Jesus. A day for me is a long time. Amen. 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 Praise the name of God. Teaching children all day, coming home, dealing with my own kids and being a husband and all of that. That's a long day. You talking about 12 years of dealing with something that I ain't asked for? Yes. Hallelujah. Let's deal with that. This Bible says she never asked to bleed consistently. The Bible says that her body just bled consistently and now she has to deal with what she never asked for. And the Bible didn't tell her when her healing was come. The Bible didn't even tell her when she was going to get healed. But her faith postured her to be in the proximity of her healing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's good teaching. This woman of God wouldn't do it. She, she just, I, 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 I believe that if she was told that she was going to suffer for 12 years. She'd cancel that check, throw that up, and yeah. it's gone out of here. Yeah. Can we bring her home? If God told you what you were going to deal with, you would have been out a long time ago. Yeah. Uh -huh. If Amen. he would have gave you a glimpse of how you how you was going to feel, you would have said, ah, God, that's, that's okay. I'm good, I'm good. I, I don't know about you, but this is how I thought of God. You should have told me about that one. Yeah, Why you didn't let me know? You didn't tell me I was going to be dealing with this issue for this amount of years, and and now you now I'm now I realize I'm dealing with. It. Now you got to show me how to come out. Amen. Uh -huh. You got to show me how to come out. You got to show me how to deal with this. But not only do you have to show, what do I need to do on my part to get to my healing? Amen. 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 So the Bible says that she suffered mm -hmm. a little long while, mm -hmm. if you will. The Bible says here in 43 that she went to every licensed position mm -hmm. that there was. Mm -hmm. She went to people who were qualified by documentation. Yeah. She went to people who went to school for her issue. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. And not neither one of them, one of them. could heal her. Uh -huh. Neither one of them could assist her. But what they did do was take her money. Maybe the doctors of now have learned from the doctors of old <laughs> that I'll just write you a prescription just to get you your money. I really can't deal with your issue. I'll just take your money and give you something that seems like it's going to carry you over. And, and, and because they cannot deal with your ailment, I can just fathom that this woman mm -hmm. began to second guess possibly herself mm -hmm. and possibly the gift of healing. Wow. Wow. Well, well. Because of dealing with this problem for 12 years and now I had faith in what you had been educated in to help me and yet your education or your skill could not assist me but yet you took my money I didn't just go to one person I went to multiple people who were qualified ah. in this area. Jesus. I went to several different churches who had the name of Christ ah. on the front and not one of them could assist me. I called every elder that I know 
because the Bible says call on the elders and they should call on God and healing should take place and not near elder who wears the collar and the black suit could help me. I didn't even try the deacon who is next in line for the elder and if we be honest they carry the same weight and I even went to the deacons who's supposed to be looking after the widow and looking after the ones who are single and not one deacon could help me. I, I went to the ushers and they couldn't even usher me to the front. I went to the musicians and they couldn't even play a sound on the instrument that could soothe me. So God, are you telling me that my help is not coming? The church is supposed to be a place for people to get healed and set free. But the problem is, Elder Kelly, we put so much in the building that we forget that you have the capabilities of healing me outside of these four walls. You got to come to the house to get healed. You have to come to the church to get healed. But the Bible says, I'm looking for a church without spot or wrinkle. Ain't no walls getting no wrinkles in it. Can't no church huh, building get me to see Jesus. I'm looking for those who know the word of God. I'm looking for those that don't mind teaching and preaching the word of God. That's where my healing is. And the only reason why healing is in the building is because you in the building. The only reason why deliverance is in the building is because of you in the building. Yeah. The only reason why people get, get revived is because you're in the building. Yeah. It ain't in the keyboard, it's in your hands. Ah. Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Glory, Glory to God. It ain't in your position, it's in your assignment. Yeah. Glory to God. But yes. some of us yes. have lost our assignment. And we're yes. looking for the healing to be in the pool. Yes. We're looking for the healing to be in the walls. But God is saying, you are the healer. Oh, God. Yes. Jesus. If I live in you, you can heal. If I live in you, you can set them free. If I live in you, you can deliver them. If I deliver you, you can save them and get them set free. Yes. Jesus. What about Jesus? Jesus. We got a report from the doctor. And we give doctors too much credit. We got the report from the doctor and we believe what the doctor says. And that brother or sister only seen me once a year. But Jesus has seen me 365 days of the year. And I've been to worship almost 365 days of the year. And you mean to tell me that I will believe the report of the doctor who only seen me one time and only diagnosed me one time, ain't asked for no second opinion, no follow-up, no nothing. But now, because he's given me a report that don't sound good to me, I believe what he says because he's educated. But I will not believe what God has said about me and he knew me before I was in my mother's womb. Not even no blood pressure medicine could help this woman. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And if I can be a little honest, couldn't a pad help her either? Amen. Amen. The Bible says she bled consistently. That's when she went to bed, when she got up, when she ate her oatmeal, when she ate Chick fil A, when she ate at uh, Kid Laws, she bled. I would have been agitated. Amen. Huh. Amen. I would have been aggravated. Be real, sir. Be real. I would have been upset yeah. with God. Come on. Can I be honest yes, here? Sir. Yes, sir. Matter of fact, I ain't had to bleed to be upset with God. Yes. I ain't had to bleed to be mad at God. Just what I deal with on a personal level, it just makes me upset with God. Because I don't understand how am I dealing with this, but still yes. preaching every Jesus. Sunday. Jesus. Amen. Church don't want to be real. I, yes, right. yeah. So I would have been upset. 
There's a word I use, but I ain't at home, so I ain't gonna use that word. Amen. I'd have been a little bothered. We caught you, sir. We with you. So she went to every physician and every doctor. Even the nurse's aide couldn't help her. And it's almost like they had to call hospice in. Because they said to her that there's no more we can do for uh -huh. you. Mm. Y'all know how it is. When the hospice comes in, that's the final. That's it. <sighs> Let's deal with this. Let's go. And so here, she dealt with this issue. I wrote this down. It says, it's not until you are at your lowest, your lowest. and at your breaking point uh -huh. that God sometimes seems to show right up. Uh -huh. Right up. I want to give you a couple of definitions of the word low mm -hmm. before we move any further. The word low is defined as less below than average. Mm -hmm. okay. And the other definition is low point. low point. Less below than average and low point. Before we go a little further, I found that you don't have to be stricken with a, a physical ailment to be low. Amen. Amen. You can be just dealing with a Life. circumstance. Life. Yeah. And that too itself may, may cause you to feel low. Amen. For us pastors feeling low when sometimes people don't show up. Just circumstances and issues and if we be honest, we don't have to be stricken with a physical ailment to feel low. Amen. Just the fact that you have talked about me like a doll yeah. makes me feel, can make me feel low. Amen. Just because you have lied on me can uh -huh. make me feel low. Yeah. By you being who you are and not encouraging me can make me feel low. Yeah. Just low, just low for no reason. Feeling like I'm not above average, I am just low. And when certain people say certain things, it makes you feel low. Be real, sir. And so she not only feels low, but she's been told that she's not going to get her healing, which makes her feel physically low. And so we look at this text, we find that even in the process of her feeling low and being deemed to be low, she still hasn't been low enough. Ah. She has not been low enough. Mm. We've all been to that place where I can't get no lower. Jesus. Amen. Let me be real. I can't take no more. Yes, yes, sir. That's yes. it. This right here is just too much for me. That's what we I'm say. done. I'm over. I'm good. That's God bless you. That's what we say. But it's not until you get to the lowest of the low uh -huh. that God proves himself. Yeah. And we got to understand that God is a prover of his word. Yeah. And so here we find that it's not until sometimes you have seen that you're at the lowest of the lows and of those lows that God comes in right on time. Right on time. Now let me pose a question. Let me ask you. Let me ask myself. I'd have asked God, what took you so long? Amen. Amen. I mean, Amen. 12 years is a long time. It's a long time. And now I ain't got no resources. I don't have any financial stability. Mm -hmm. And these brothers has told me that it's not going to happen. Uh -huh. What took you so long? Jesus. Lord. Or what's taking you so long? Yeah. I thought you said you're omnipresent. Uh -huh. I thought you said you would never leave us nor forsake you. This is how I talk to God. I thought you said you would be right by my side. So why have I not got my healing yet? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I believe in the impossible. I believe beyond measure. I believe but what I can't see. But yet what I believe what I can't see ain't happened to me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You in my house, sir. A am I talking to anybody? You in my house, yes, sir. Yes. What's taking so long? Jesus. You said you stepped right on in. Well, yes. well, I've been in it for so long. Why you ain't step in yet? Jesus. Jesus. Amen. You got a witness, sir. So she says here, let's move on. Let's go. Let's get out of here. 
Verse 44, 43. And the woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon the physicians, neither one of them could heal her. The Bible says in verse 44 in the New Living Translation, it says, coming up behind Jesus. I'm setting up something, if you will. Coming up behind Jesus. There's a crowd here. There's a whole bunch of people around Jesus because of his infinite wisdom and because his power that he's possessed and people have heard about Jesus. And anytime Jesus show up, he always draws a crowd. Yes. Amen. That's right. Not only does he draw, but he also delivers. Yes, sir. And so here it is. Jesus has showed up and has caused a whole lot of people to come towards him. And the Bible says that there were so many people around him that when the woman touched him, he had to ask the question, who touched him? me let's go back here so the bible says coming up behind jesus she touched the fringe of his robe the king james says the hem or the base of his robe the new living translation says the fringe and i want to use this for a second the fringe because fringes are not necessarily attached That's right. to the base okay. in a whole part of the road. Uh -huh. okay. Fringes are developed because of pulling from yeah. the road. Okay. You're teaching, okay. Pastor. Anytime that you have a loose button on your coat is because the fringes uh -huh. right. have uh -huh. become loose wow. from right. the garment. All right. When I was a little boy, there were some fringes underneath my Aunt Carolyn's sofa. Mm -hmm. And because I like to play with fire, I set her fringes on fire, which caused her whole couch to catch on fire. Wow. There is power in fringes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And because I set her couch on fire, she set me ablaze. I know she did. I know she did. <laughs> she touched me and I reached out. Uh huh. <laughs> All because of fringes. Fringes. When we look at this robe, there is power in this robe. Robe. Uh -huh. yes, sir. Let me give you some research. The only people who wore robes were the people yes, who were yes. deemed to have authority. Uh -huh. Anytime kings wore robes, it was simply to simplify that he was the one in charge. He yeah. was the one that possessed the glory. He was the one that possessed the anointing. The Bible says, and his train filled the temple. Which means that even if God don't show up in his physical aspect, that when his train goes in the temple, there's healing even in his God. But Jesus was the only one wearing the robe. Now, it possibly could have been because he's been wearing this robe. And when we hear fringes, this robe has had some wear and tear. Uh -huh. That's good. This robe had been through some stuff. This robe has carried some issues. This robe has carried some stuff which caused the robe to start breaking down its fragments. My Lord. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is why the woman could get her healing because the robe had been through some of the same stuff oh, Lord. that she has been through. Pastor, what are you talking about? This robe had been dragged through the mud. Her issue had been dragging her. This robe had been going to and fro. She has been going to and fro. This robe had been over rock and hard surfaces and she has been dealing with some hard stuff and maybe the robe could 
relate to her issues, but could also provide her her healing. Yes. Ah. The only yes, reason sir. why you can help somebody is because you've come out of what they're in. My God. Yes, sir. Which means that you've been through what they've been through and you have been successful in coming out of what they're in. Now you have graduated to the place. Now you can help them. Yes, That's sir. Right. Yes, sir. That's right. So the robe fragments are lingering there. Mm -hmm. This woman comes behind Jesus. Mm -hmm. She's already low because she ain't got no money. She already low because she got this issue that seems to have her. She don't got it. Mm -hmm. She's been to every person she can and cannot help her. Yes, yes. And she is at her lowest point. Yeah. So she thought. So she thought. The Bible says she went behind Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the Bible declares that she touched the fragments of his robe. Mm -hmm. How is it that she can touch the fragments of his robe and receive the healing? Well, here it is. She's at her lowest. I'm trying to, I'm trying to catch y'all to catch it. She ain't got no money. None. Ain't got no friends because everybody's talking about her like she's a dog because she's bleeding. She's not well. Mm -hmm. That's right. She's not well. Yeah. She's not well. Jesus. Yeah. She ain't well. Yeah. Uh -huh. Which means that she's been deemed an outcaster because she's not well. Yes, sir. You can't come in the presence of God because you ain't well. Yes. Jesus. And here she is at her lowest point with all of this. And I'm sure she said to herself, I'm at my lowest of the low. Uh -huh. But not so. Not so. She ain't got low enough yet. Ah. The Bible says that she followed Jesus. Yeah. Which means that she kept him in her sight. Ah, even with her issue. Jesus. Jesus. There's a crowd here. And I'm trying to set this thing up before I get there. There's a crowd here. And Jesus is surrounded by a whole bunch of people. But yet, she has the ability to touch him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The only reason why she can touch him is because she sees him. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. She sees him beyond her issue. Oh, ah. That's good. Can I, if I may, can I be myself? The crowd. If a whole bunch of people is around Jesus at this place, I can't really see him all as well as I want to. That's right. So she has to get to a high place to be able to recognize where he is first. Uh -huh. yeah. And to pinpoint the proximity that he's in in order for her to reach him at a low place. Right. Yeah. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. My God. Because if y'all crowd the brother right here, and if he's not taller than any of you, I will lose sight of him in, 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 in lieu of you all surrounding him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But isn't it amazing that she can still see Jesus in spite of her issue? Yeah. Isn't it amazing that she can still see Jesus in spite of who else is around him? This means that she had a personal uh, uh, opportunity to reach him where everybody was trying to take up her space. Ah. Ah. My God. So she's following behind him. And the Bible says that she reached for the fringes. Mm -hmm. In order for her to reach for the fringes, ah. she has got to get lower mm -hmm. than where she was. Yeah. She's already, brother, sick and tired of going to people who can't help her. That's a low state when you are looking for help and can't nobody help you. Jesus. She has already spent all her money when she's trying to go get a piece of chicken and she can't even afford a piece if she wants to. And now you are calling her to get lower than her issues, lower than her money, lower to, to, to lower than what she's feeling to get her healing? Ah, Jesus. Teach, sir. 
I want you to put yourself in her position real quick before we get to the hymn. They're still moving. Mm-hmm. He's still walking. My God. My God. They're still going. Yeah. The Bible is they didn't stop. No. Mm -hmm. They're still going, bro. Mm -hmm. Which means I have lost a little bit of time getting low. Ah. <laughs> because I can catch up with you on my two feet when I'm upright. Yeah. But when I'm on a low place, it takes me longer to get to you than it is that I'm on my high place. Right. Come on, sir. Come on. So not only, I keep being redundant because I really want y'all to get it. Not only am I broke, I can't get no help, but now you got me on my knees. Uh -huh. Jesus. Yeah. And y'all are still moving. Mm -hmm. I can do like this. Uh-huh. But I'm still not catching up with the pace. Uh -huh. Oh God. But what I gotta do is drop everything you got and start crawling. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. To get to where Jesus is. Yeah. Oh. But I'm still bleeding oh. as I'm crawling. Oh. I'm still dying as I'm crawling. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yes. Demonstrate, Jesus. sir. And now you want me to get to the place. Watch this. She's done crawled to where she got to go. Uh -huh. But she still ain't at a low. Mm -mm. My God. Now she got to do this. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And it's not until she falls to the lowest of the low stretch out, stretch out. that she's able to stretch out oh. and reach the friends. Yes. I ain't even got to touch the old him. Just give me a piece of the frack. Just a piece. I done seen you cry. I done heard your plea. Yes. I done seen you be in that without. Jesus. But it's not until you get here uh -huh. that I understand that I can rescue you wholeheartedly yeah. uh -huh. now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Jesus. So the Bible says, can you imagine, please, please picture it. She's bleeding. She's in dirt. People are crowding Jesus. Jesus. She's on her knees, Hallelujah. having to get on her face. Mm -hmm. And not only that, that's an embarrassment, but she's embarrassed by her issue because everybody's calling her by her issue, not by her name. Yeah. yeah. And she's still there. And Sister Kelly, Elder Kelly, it ain't that, just she's there. Jesus. But now her clothes are getting dirty. Oh, oh, now her clothes are getting dirty. Oh, I'm already God. dirty with my issue. Yes. I'm already yes. dirty. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm already dirty with what I'm dealing with. Oh, I'm already dirty from dealing with people who can't help me. I'm already dirty from dealing with people who robbed me and took me and skipped all of my stuff. But now you want me to get on my face and get even more dirtier. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. My God. Thank, Thank you, God. God. My God. Thank you, Jesus. But even out of all of this, there was still something on the, in, on the inside, inside of her yeah. that said, I am at my lowest point. Yeah. Jesus. But whatever it takes for whatever me it takes. to get to oh, Jesus, yeah. if I got to do the army crawl, whatever oh, it takes for me Lord. to get here, and God, with all the little bit of strength that I got, I'm still oh, bleeding, which means it's taking energy from me. I'm going to use every ounce to touch what I can. Oh, Hallelujah. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Wow. Thank you, King Jesus. Mm. If I got to pray 24 hours God. to get to you, so be, it. Uh -huh. so be it. If I got to lose some friends to get to you, yes. so, be so be it. If I got to leave certain places to get to who Jesus is, yes. so, so be it. Yes. So be it. That's all. So she's there on her face. But it wasn't until she got here mm -hmm. and she touched the fringe mm. that she was able to do this mm. yeah. and stand. Uh -huh. yeah. The Bible declares that after Hallelujah. she touched the fringe, uh -huh. the Bible says right here that immediately her Jesus. issue of blood drew up. It's at that place of desperation oh, yeah. that God meets your immediate need. Yeah. It's at that place where you kill yourself to yeah. get your healing. Yeah. It's at that place where you will sacrifice your name and you will sacrifice your uniform and you will sacrifice uh, what you've been going through to get your immediate healing. The Bible here says that immediately. 
immediately. It was before Jesus even said, who touched me? It was before Jesus even recognized who, that he had been touched, but the Bible declares there was so much anointing and there was so much power and there was so much authority in the fringes of his robe that it healed her before he could say, who touched me? And the Bible declares that after he came to himself, he asked around, he said, who was it that touched me? He said, when all, was everybody around me? Peter, he said, God, you want me to tell you who touched you with all of these people around you? I can't fathom, I can't tell you because it's too many people to tell you. But the Bible declares that Jesus said, I don't know who it was. And I'm not really concerned about who it was. But all I need to know was who touched me. And not because of the healing, but because of the faith. Because of your faith. What are you saying? That your faith has healing power. That your faith has healing power. You don't necessarily have to touch Jesus physically. But if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, it will begin to posture you in a place that your healing, your hands can't touch. It will posture you in a place where you get healing, where your physical body can't touch. Yeah. 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 He said, somebody mm-hmm. touched me. Uh-huh. Now I'm going to really make it known here. Glory to God. That Jesus did speak to her situation. Ah, not one word. Jesus, Jesus. 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 Y'all catch that? Yeah. Jesus. Wow. Jesus did not speak to her blood. Uh-huh. Jesus did not speak to her circumstance. Uh-huh. Yeah. Not a word. He didn't say not one single word, but the robe did the work. Uh-huh. But it really wasn't about the robe either. It was really about her faith. Uh-huh. And I'm coming to encourage you today that when you move from one posture to another, your faith should increase. Yes. Listen, let me tell you something. That if we never prayed for you and laid hands on you about your issue. All right, all right. If we never called it by name, uh-huh. just the mere presence of Jesus being in the room should deliver you and pull you out of what's been holding you for 12 years. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Glory yes. to God. Wow. Hallelujah. He was only inquiring because he felt virtually. Uh huh. At the fringe? Mm. Huh. Yes, God. Not even the him? <laughs> Not even the whole suit broke? Not even the whole dress? Just the fringe. Just a little piece. That shows you how powerful fringes are. Yeah. So baby, don't don't get rid of your fringes so soon. <laughs> That's the word. Catch the word fringes. Catch the word frenemies. Uh huh. Don't get rid of your frenemies so soon. You're gonna need them to get your healing. You're gonna need them to get your deliverance. You're gonna need them to get your breakthrough. Because if you don't ever have enemies, you ain't never gonna have a footstool. If you ain't gonna never have no enemies, you're never gonna be mounted up and go nowhere. You need your fringes. Teach, sir, teach. (laughs) You need your frenemies. Yeah. There's power in your fringes. So he says, virtue left me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she went to hide after she got her healing. We ain't seen you in 12 weeks after you got your deliverance. Oh, God. Oh, God. You ain't been back to house of God and got your breakthrough since you've been broken through. Uh-huh. We got to be careful of not being embarrassed about what God has done for us. That's a good The word. Bible declares that we are overcomers yeah. by the word of our testimony yeah. and the blood of the Lamb. Yeah. Was it not the blood that was working in Jesus that the road got power from, that she got our healing? So you cannot be ashamed or be hidden by your breakthrough. Yeah. Mm. You're helping us, sir. 
You help me. Let me bring it home. Don't be scared of telling the people you came out. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. You didn't hide and see. That's what it's all about. My God. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, God. The Bible says that she realized mm -hmm. she was not hidden. So she came trembling and falling down before him. Mm -hmm. I wish I had more time. Mm -hmm. So she got on her face mm -hmm. to touch to get her healing. Mm -hmm. And she went and hid. Mm -hmm. But when Jesus was inquiring of her, it was drawing her back out of her dark place. All right. All right. Sometimes we'll get a breakthrough and go right back into the same stuff. Uh -oh. Jesus. Right. And God called her out, and the Bible says she fell again. Mm -hmm. This time, she didn't fall for her healing. Mm -hmm. This time, she fell for reverence. Yeah. Ah, right. Right. She failed to reverence him to get her healing. Mm -hmm. But the same God that gave you your healing, you need to bow down to just to honor. Yes, sir. Right. Yep. Don't be stealing from God and not give credit where credit is due. Ah. Don't you rob God of, and he done healed you and got you out and then deny what he did for you in the past. Right. Come on, man of God. This is why the church can't be filled. The building can't be filled because we're scared to tell what God done for us. This is why the, the pews and the, and the chairs can't, can't be filled because we scared to tell what the people are about what God done for us. Yes, you came out of fornicating. Yes, you came out of adultery. Yes, you came out of homosexuality. Yes, you came out from being a builder. Come on, sir. So true. Ain't nobody going to be set free with your mouth closed. Those mouths don't get fed. Jesus. Jesus. Y'all get me out of here. She declared unto him before all the people. Now here it is. Here it is right here. After she got a healing, she went back to hiding. She came back to Jesus in reverence. And then there was a boldness that rose inside of her that caused her to tell everybody what the master had done for her and the bible says there that she declared which means she spoke it and she put it out there unto him before all the people for what cause for what cause she had touched him and the bible says and how she was healed immediately the woman felt her immediately healing before jesus even talked to her and then she said and he said unto her daughter be of good comfort. Mm -hmm. Thy faith has made thee whole. Amen. You get low yeah. to get up. Jesus. All right. You ain't going nowhere until you get down to the low. That's good. That's good. You ain't going no higher until you get to the low. The Bible says going through the valley uh -huh. and the shadow of death, which means that you got to face yeah. Some stuff that looks like death. But it ain't gonna take you out. It's just a shadow. It's just a glimpse of what it looks like. But the only way a shadow takes place is that it's gotta be reflected off an object and the reflection comes from the sun. Uh-huh. The sun. The sun causes the shadow of the glimpse of death, but it ain't death. It's just for you to tolerate. Uh-huh. Y'all stand so we can get out of here.